this is Reverend Don Lewis, and welcome to another episode of Living the Wiccan Life. In this episode, I'm very pleased to bring you my recent interview with the great Selena Fox of Circle Sanctuary. I was very privileged to catch up with Selena at the 35th anniversary party being held for Circle at Pantheacon. This is only one of the many parties leading up to the actual anniversary at Samhain. In the interview, Lady Selena talks about many things, including the Parliament of World's Religions, the history of Circle, and how she herself came to paganism. I'm sure that you'll enjoy this interview. This is Selena Fox, and I'm at Pantheacon 2009 in the Circle Sanctuary Hospitality Suite, uh, just hours away from our 35th anniversary party celebrating Circle's birthday coming up at Sawan. And you're celebrating um, at this event the 35th anniversary, I believe. Yes, at uh, PantheaCon this year, Circle Sanctuary is having a number of social events in addition to the presentations I'm doing and some of our other ministers are doing. And tonight, in the Circle Sanctuary Hospitality Suite, we are celebrating 35 years of pagan service for Circle Sanctuary. Circle Sanctuary turns 35 years old this Samhain. Ah, but we're beginning the celebration early. That's an incredible achievement. Well, I'm very and glad that we are continuing to be able to do the work, and we're really thankful for all the people that have been supporting us over the years. I, I know you, I know you've had many, many successes, and I know you've had a few struggles, too, in, in those 30-some years. And um, I'm, I'm not going to ask if there were ever times that you got very frustrated, because I'm sure there were. But um, let, let me ask, what what is the most memorable, positive thing from, from the whole 35 years for you? Wow, what an what a interesting question. I think getting our land in 1983 was one of the highlights. There have been a variety of highlights, but being able to finally start a pagan land project and one that got the widespread support of pagans from many paths and traditions, not only in the United States, but around the world. Yes, we had some adventures and sorting through zoning issues and um, interface with um, the larger community as part of the project. Not everyone around us really understood what paganism is, and not everybody in the local area really understood a nature preserve for what they saw was farmland. It had been a working farm for several decades. However, for the most part of its existence, it had been in a pretty natural state. Um, we were the Circle Sanctuary is only the seventh so-called owners of the land since Wisconsin became a territory. Wow. And it has continued to grow and develop as a nature preserve, not only a place where we are preserving habitat for a variety of different types of creatures, uh, but also preserving ecological diversity. And most importantly, Circle Sanctuary's Sacred Land Project is about building good connections between humankind and the rest of the natural world. Well, I believe you have always been very, very strong on, on connection to the land and, and the power of place. Yes, uh, the power of place, I think, is really at the heart of paganism and other form of nature religion. And yes, there is many ways to practice paganism and one does not have to be the caregiver of sacred land in order to practice paganism. But I think it's really important that pagans have some places that are set up to be sacred places for pagan worship, meditation, and nature communion, so that they're safe and there is an ongoing legacy of working with land in a sacred way. Our latest development with our land project began in 1995 when we established a national pagan cemetery. And besides being a National Pagan Cemetery for pagans of many different paths, we're actually one of the first green or conservation cemeteries in the United States. That's wonderful. 
Well, what is a conservation cemetery? It is a cemetery that combines nature preservation with the uh, burial and the scattering of the remains of humans. And we're working on expanding the cemetery so we can do green burials. Right now we have cremains at our cemetery. And we are really looking to continue to develop the project in the years to come and to have it open not only to pagans of many paths, but other people who are pagan spirited or very much attuned to the sacred dimensions of nature. Uh, one of the things I know you've been very involved with is the Parliament of World's Religions. And uh, I was wondering if you could say a few words about that. Circle Sanctuary has been a, a strong supporter of the Parliament of World's Religions as well as a variety of interfaith endeavors on the international level down to the local level. What I really like about the Parliament of the World's Religions has been since its revival in 1993, pagans have been included in the circle of world religions, giving support to the Parliament, speaking at the Parliament. And I think it's really important that pagans of many paths join in this important interfaith endeavor. Not only because it's international, and multicultural, but because it is something that is focused on some much larger issues in the world in addition to bringing people of different faiths together. What are some of those larger issues? Working for a better environment. In particular, some very specific things. Abundant and clean water around the world for the world's peoples and other life forms looking for ways to stop religious violence, looking for ways that humankind can live in harmony, not only with each other, but the greater web of life of which we are all part. So beginning in 1993, Circle Sanctuary has had a delegation at each of the Parliament of the World's Religions. In 1993, which was held in Chicago, some of us, myself included, did presentations, we also were part of collaborative efforts, rituals, exhibit booths, networking events with pagans of many paths. And of course, we took part in a variety of interfaith forums and social events. In 1999, Circle Sanctuary also supported the Parliament of World Religions when it convened in Cape Town, South Africa. I was at the 93 Parliament with a number of people from Circle Sanctuary and in 1999, there were also um, some of us joining together to be there. There we had a chance to connect with pagans from South Africa that were part of the Circle Network. And we connected with pagans from many different places. We put on a reception for pagans who were at the Parliament to have us all network together as the Parliament emerged. And there were certainly some networking things that happened at the 93 Parliament, but here our numbers at the 99 Parliament because of the distance um, weren't as high as the one held in the United States and then the city of Chicago with, has lots and lots of pagans. But those of us who joined together in the 99 Parliament were very involved in not only networking with each other, but reaching out and connecting with people of other nature religions as well as other forms of world religions. In 2004, Circle Sanctuary had a delegation that went to the Parliament in Barcelona, and I had the pleasure to be part of that delegation as well. Here again, we put on a big reception and had pagans from even more places coming together and different groups and even a wider range than we had had at the previous parliaments. And I think one of the most exciting things about the 2004 parliament in Barcelona was the fact that we truly came together as a world religion. When I considered what proposal to put in as something that I might present on in 2004, I decided to do Circles in the Greenwood, Paganism as World Religion. And not only did I speak, but I really wanted to have a forum 
where pagans from many continents, many countries, many traditions could each share about their tradition and how paganism existed within the place they were from. The room was totally packed and we had a lot of excellent discussion, not only from pagans who showed up from the different paths, but from people from many different religions. We also had the opportunity to join together in a variety of different rituals and pagans in Barcelona who spoke Catalan worked with us and the other groups of pagans that were there to have a grand party on communities night. So in the chocolate museum of Barcelona, <laughs> pagans of many languages and many places and many paths all came together to celebrate paganism as a world religion. That's wonderful. And now Australia is happening in 2009. Circle Sanctuary already has been preparing for that and looking at what kinds of things we might be able to offer there. We've been networking with people around the world about going and it's going to be a wonderful journey to go to yet another continent for the Parliament of the World's Religions. When you put it that way, it really puts into perspective how remarkable the whole thing is. Yet another continent. We're literally <laughs> and it's really going, around the world. You're, you're exactly right. We're literally going around the world with the parliament. And what's fabulous is truly paganism is a world religion. And yes, there are many traditions within the larger realm of paganism. But yet we have chants in common. We have values in common. We have ritual practices in common. And I think those of us that take part in these international interfaith gatherings have in common the vision that not only can we reach out and develop greater understanding for pagans and other nature religion practitioners around the world, but that we can truly be part of that larger world community of religions. Yes, indeed. I have one more question for you, just a tiny little question. How did you happen to become pagan? I think my pagan journey is best traced to my childhood. I see really my earliest experiences of communing with nature. It was a manifestation of being a pagan soul. Yes, I was raised Fundamentalist Southern Baptist and I went to church on a very regular basis, uh, multiple times during the week and on a Sunday. But that nature spirituality that I see is at the heart of pagan religion was there simultaneously as I was taking part in family church outings. I found that I had much stronger spiritual experiences when I was out communing with the trees and the birds and the other life forms around. And then when I was a teenager, I found from my study of the classics pantheism as a philosophy really was a better expression of what my particular way of understanding the world was. So it was less that I actually rejected Christianity and my Christian roots. It was more that I drew a much wider circle of spiritual possibility and exploration for myself. And I think part of my interfaith journey now as a pagan priestess, as an interfaith leader as well, really goes back to the fact that early in life I was pagan, but I also was involved with practicing other religions. Uh, last thing, would you care to give your contact information for your many different organizations? Yes, the best way to reach me is selena at circlesanctuary.org. You can go to the Circle Sanctuary website, www.circlesanctuary.org, and you can call the Circle Sanctuary office, 608-924-2216. Another way to connect with me is through my professional page, or what I call my Life's Work page on Facebook, and through my website, www.selenafox.com. It's Wonderful. been great connecting, and Congratulations on the 35 years. Thank you very it's much. It's a very amazing achievement. Well, and I imagine we're going to continue the celebration oh, for yeah. months ahead. And thank you very much for your support. Thank you.
I hope that you enjoyed this interview and that you'll join us again next time for more of Living the Wiccan Life. Until then, may you blessed be. And don't forget our books, Witch School First, Second, and Third Degree, Ritual and Theory in Practice, and Living the Wiccan Life, available now at a bookstore near you or get them direct from us at www.witchschoolstore.com.